Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here, and welcome to part 5 of our Ammo by MIG build of the Bandai Perfect Grade 160 scale Zaku 2. Right, so in this episode, we're going to get the cockpit all sorted out and nice and painted. You can see I've made a start on some of the details as I was doing in the last episode. Not gone too whole hog, uh, but I'm going to step you through some things I have done. Uh, we'll get some, I'll show you how to paint this screen, how to paint the light above it, uh, how to paint these rusty pipes, the initial rusty colourings, and we'll then go into the weathering, get it all weathered up, we'll assemble it, get the outside parts put on and get them weathered as well, and ideally at the end of this episode what we have is a completely weathered cockpit that can just be then put to one side and won't be touched again until we start to assemble the frame. So, my thinking for this colour scheme, um, I was going to do like um like on a tank, like a white off white coat on the inside and then chip that back. However, when this model's being displayed, it's basically going to be a dark little cavern in the cockpit and you won't really see much. Uh, and I want to try and, have, you know, improve that a bit. So what I decided was to keep it as just bare metal. Again, going along with the, it's a grunt suit, it's mass produced, it's cheap and cheerful. They're not going to bother painting the inside too much. So I'm going to keep it this bare metal, which is the gun metal, then dry brush with the steel uh, and just paint little detail. So in the cockpit, really, I'm just doing the screen and the light uh, and the chair. Now, I did the chair. You saw me do the chair in the last episode. That just looks like ass. I kind of started painting the cushioning and it was like, mm, nah, it's not going to work. So I'm going to repaint that grey, do the leather for the seat black. Uh, and then we'll do some weathering on it. So that's going off to one side because that's just rubbish. So what I'll show you first of all um, is how to paint this little light on top. Then I'll show you how to do the screen. Then I'll take you through the tubes on these parts. Uh, everything else was just carefully painted with the brush. The engines, I've done all the brushwork now with a mixture of there's the silver, there's the dunkel gelb. Uh, there's the shadow rust and then there's a mixture of the bronze colours and the gold colours. This was kind of a custom mix of gold and bronze and all kinds of different shades mixed in. Just to give it some variation, just to make it interesting uh, and not just a flat colour. There's lots of weathering to do on these yet, so we don't get, too, don't get too carried away. This isn't the final thing. Right, so let me go and get ready and I'll show you how to do this light. That, that one. Well, not that one actually. Yeah, I'm not prepared, you know that. Right, okay, so we're going to start with this little strip light. Now you can see on this one, and it might not come out on camera, it's kind of off-white with a hint of yellow around the edges. That's what I wanted to get, That's uh, that kind of old strip light effect. If you go and look at an old strip light, it's never clear. It's always, they're always a bit faded and UV damaged. The clear plastic's gone a bit damaged, so I've put some yellow around the edge. So I'm going to show you how to do that first of all, and it couldn't be easier. Uh, so we'll take our other piece. Now this has just got a base coat applied first of all. And that is a base coat of uh, Amig 119 Cold Grey. I'm not using white, you'll notice, just cold grey. So first of all, paint it with the cold grey. Now I'm going to add some 048 yellow. So I've got the paint in my little mixing pot. That'll do. Uh, we will get a little bit of thinners, and we'll put quite a while, quite a few blobs, because I want it really thin. And I'm basically going to make a wash. So I'm just going to mix that a little bit with the back of my brush. I want it really thin. Okay, so what do we do? Dead simple. All I'm going to do first of all is take my piece and I'm just going to go over and I'm going to try and focus, if I can do it without having my finger in the shot, try and focus on the edges, the top and bottom edge if I can. Doesn't matter if you cut the whole piece because we're going to come back to it. So I'm basically doing like a wash. Oops, knocking the camera as well. Basically doing like a wash over this part, and it's very subtle, and it may not even come out at all. So I'm just touching it to the top and bottom, and what that should do is give it a little stain of yellow. So there we go. That's that stage. Again, apologies, it probably isn't even beginning to come out on camera. But it's now got like a yellow hue to it. So that is the amount that we will need to use the yellow paint. Now what I need to do is let that dry for 10 or 15 minutes. Flash off. And then we'll come back in with the cold grey. So let me go and let that dry. In fact, no, while that's drying, I'll show you how to do this screen. And there is a plan for this screen, which involves a decal. 
So let me get the other piece. Now, the, the thing I'm trying to get here, and I'm just going to focus for you. What I'm trying to achieve here is something like this, which is what I've done on the bit that goes inside the door. You can see there I've got this nice green screen. It kind of looks like an old tube, uh, cathode ray tube monitor. And that's exactly what I was after. If you've played Fallout games like Fallout 3 or Fallout 4, think of it like a Pip-Boy screen. It's green and the text on top is a shade of green and it's all green and it's curved. Um, and this is the effect I want. Now this is possibly the easiest thing you'll ever do. Now this one was even easier because this is a recessed screen. So that one was fairly easy. And like I'm trying to, like I've said before, what I'm trying to suggest is that this is cheap, cheerful, it's mass produced. They don't spend any money on it. They want numbers rather than quality. So they want hundreds of these out on the battlefield, not three or four of them at really good quality. So this is really easy. So we're going to take our, uh, which one is it? A MIG 096 Crystal Periscope Green. This is a clear green colour. So we're going to take a little bit of paint. And I'm just going to put a dot on this plastic lid. I don't need much. And this is the easiest thing in the world. What you do, take yourself a big brush, not a small brush. Big brush. Load that sucker with paint. And do this. Just touch it to the screen. Now this has got a little recessed rim around the edge rather than actually being recessed and what I'm trying to do and failing miserably on this one is to avoid going into that rim but that's going to get a black wash later anyway so it's not the end of the world and all we're going to do is just load this with the paint and because it's a kind of naturally slightly thick and gloopy paint surface tension if I hadn't got it down that little rim there surface tension will keep it to the edge and we'll actually give you a little silvery rim around the edge. Now I've goofed a bit there and it's gone down into that little recess, but it's not the end of the world. As I say, that's going to get a, a black wash or a, a dark wash in there anyway, so that will just become an outline. And that is all I need to do, because as that dries, it will flatten out. If it was a recess one, the, the darker colour would collect around the edges and give you that kind of three-dimensional feel. Because this is a lighter colour, this is a, a flatter surface, it's going to be slightly different. It's going to collect, like I showed earlier, it's going to collect the green more in the middle than around the edge. So that's the effect we want to achieve. So I need to leave that to dry for a little while now because I need to leave it about half an hour, an hour, just so it can flatten completely. It's a slightly shiny colour there, so it's pretty cool. Uh, and then there is a plan to carry on with that later and do more to make it look like a computer screen. So let me go and move this to one side, uh, get the other piece back. That should be possibly dry by now give it another five minutes and we'll crack on again with that strip light so back in a moment right okay so we're back with this strip light uh, again you might not be able to see it but hopefully on camera it comes out with slightly yellowed all we're going to do now is try and suggest not that the light is on maybe but just give it a bit of a different hue different aspect so we're going to take a little something as a palette and take a little of the 119 cold gray just a dot. Again, you could use white. I just like this cold grey because it's ever so slightly off-white. And all we are going to do is take a little bit of the gold grey. Gold grey? Cold grey even. And quite simply, I'm just going to go down the middle. Now, it may take a few coats. This cold grey is quite a translucent colour, or semi-translucent, so... It may take a few goes. Go lightly. I'm not pushing the brush down. I'm just touching it to the to the plastic. And what I'm hoping to achieve without getting a brush mark in it. Give it a blow. Is just to get a bit of white in the middle so that the bottom edges stay more yellowed and the middle part stays white. Shaky hands today as well. Now in reality, of course, and that's, that's the kind of it, now it's done. Now in reality, of course, nobody's ever going to see this because even if it's displayed with the cockpit open, and even though I've kept it kind of bright with the metallic colours, it's kind of hidden away and it's on the side wall. So, never mind, but I know it's there and that's the important thing. With model making, it's as, as much as you want to do. 
So that's that strip light done. Put that to one side. Now what's next? Next is the tubes. Now you can see on here, on this one, I've got a slight rusty mottling. Now this isn't by, by any means the be all and end all of the rust colour. Uh, this is just the base colours for rust. Uh, but what I will show you is how I've achieved that. So what we did was we took our original piece and that was painted with the Shadow Rust, which is MIG 043. But I mixed in a little bit of white just to give it a paler colour. So it's more of a mushroom, more of a taupe. Uh, now what I'm going to do now is take some more Shadow Rust. And I want two blobs. One there, one there. I'm going to take some of the thinner, which by the way is MIG 2000. This blob, I'm going to put lots of thinner in because I want to make a wash. So we're going to take our brush. That's the wrong one. Where's it got? There it is. First thing we're going to do is take some of this wash and just wash it over the tube carelessly. Now this will tint it a little bit. But more importantly, it'll make it wet, which is what I'm after. And this is what I'm trying to get the coverage on there. Oh, that sentence didn't make any sense. So now that's still wet, I'm going to take some of the normal paint. And I'm just going to start working it around little edges. If you can see, if I keep it in shot. Now because it's wet with the thinner, it may actually nicely blend a little bit. So I'm just putting little spots and dots on there. Get it to collect in the recesses. And where it would make sense for rust to collect. If it's a liquid coming from above, more rust would collect at the bottom. And it can be fairly careless. Again, this is going to get so weathered and washed and gunked up that you probably won't see any of this anyway. Focus around these little panel lines okay so that's going to do for that it's just like paint chipping same principle but I'm doing it on a wet surface so it's going to blend a little bit and fade uh, and then I'll do exactly the same on the other one and when that's dried it should have a nice slightly rusty look so that's going to do for that let that dry and then that will be ready for the next stage of weathering what is next? Uh, okay, nothing else to do in terms of interior details. I need to go and paint that chair. So let's get that chair. I'm going to spray that chair uh, a grey colour. Uh, and when we come back, I'll have painted the, the uh, cushions black. And I'll show you a funky little technique for making it look like black leather. So, back in a moment. Okay, right now, a little confession. It's actually been several, several weeks since we last did the last... Uh, a little bit so it's time for me to catch up and remember what the hell I was in the middle of doing uh, first of all I've got a new microphone so I can talk much quieter yes now this is remember the seat looked a bit rubbish well this is the seat as it stands at the moment I've repainted it now it looks a bit weird but there is a cunning plan so uh, we have painted the frame a dark grey uh, we have painted I can't remember which grey it was, unfortunately, it's several, several weeks ago. Uh, painted the leather parts, or I've decided leather parts, uh, medium blue, a MIG-103. And we're going to start making this look like a chair. Now, you might be thinking, what the hell am I doing with this blue? Well, all will be revealed. For the moment, we're going to work on the grey. So, let's get this grey done. We want to do some chipping on the grey. So, we're going to use our old friend, steel, a MIG-191, very filthy dirty bottle here. Give it a good shake. I've got my little surface to put some paint on. So I'm going to put a little dot of paint on there because we don't need much. So a little bit of, of the steel paint here and we're just going to do a little bit of chipping first of all. And as usual this is going to be hard for me to do while I'm actually doing it on camera so bear with me. Uh, so we just want to do some light chipping around edges. And I'm just using a really fine brush just to go in and put some chipping on here. Now there is more weathering to come, so don't worry, it looks all nice and clean. That will change. And put some little tiny 
spots of chips. Now, if you've seen me do paint chippings before, you know exactly how I'm doing this. This is just little bits of chips and things just to suggest rough edges, worn paint. So I'll just get this done. And you can do as much or as little as you want. I'm trying to do this with a shaky hand whilst holding this in a shaky hand. Deep joy. And the weather in that is to come will hide a lot of this anyway. So don't worry if it stands out a bit too much. Hopefully this is all in focus for you. So I'll do a bit more around the, here where the hand would be. Just little chips and bits. Just to give it some character. So that's going to do for that. So just a little bit of chipping just to get some exposed metal. It's more on this side, it's a bit unbalanced. Right, so I'll go and clean my brush, let that dry for a little while. Uh, I'm doing the grey parts first because of what I've got planned with the blue parts. So don't worry, it'll all make sense very shortly. So let me leave that to dry for a little while. Uh, and when we come back, we'll do a little bit of dry brushing. So, back in a moment. Okay, so this had a little while to dry, and I'm going to do some dry brushing. So I've got my traditional flat dry brushing brush, which is just a soft chisel edge brush. I always use this for metallic dry brushing. So, that's very loud, sorry. We're going to take some more steel, and I'm doing this off camera. We don't need a lot, just a few drops. And you've seen me do dry brushing before, we need a bit of tissue and the flat brush. So we're going to get the paint on the brush and really get it in there. Oh yes, Ooh, oh yes, get it in there. Now we're going to take most of that paint off on the tissue because of where the camera is, I'm using my left hand and it's really weird because I'm right handed. So we're going to get most of that off. Oops, and not the camera as always. Okay, that's most of it I think. Now all we're going to do is just take this chair and dry brush it. Now I'm going to make it come from the bottom up because that's, I've decided that's where it will be cool. We'll get some edges as well. So just literally very lightly, hardly touching it. I'm just going to... I said from the bottom up and now I'm doing it from the top down. I meant top down. Just going to very lightly just do a little bit just to pick up the edges and give it some some worn looking variation. You could use a smaller brush if you want to get even finer, but this brush is fine for me. So it's just blending that original dry brush steel in a little bit. And you'll see on here, I'm just going to go a little bit round. I'll go from the bottom up on this one, because I'll imagine that's where his feet are going to be and more likely to bang against the thing. I want to do a little bit of blending on either side on camera as well be good where his feet his legs might go and that is all I need to do maybe just a little bit more here same way we did with the inner frame I'm just gonna go around this back bit here now I'm not bothered if I'm getting it on the blue at this point so we'll just pick out these edges you can get quite far with the brush with the paint on the brush, you'd have to reload it very often. Okay, so that's going to do for now. I'll just try and catch this edge here. Again, I'm not fussed if it's going on the blue, and you'll see why. And bearing in mind again, as always, this is going to be inside, and you probably won't ever even see this. So that's some dry brushing done. So I'm going to leave this just to dry for five or ten minutes. Uh, and then we're going to move on to the blue part. And it's how we're we going to make this look like a leather seat. Well, I have a cunning plan that may or may not work. So let me leave this to dry for a little while. Okay, right, I have to apologize quite sincerely. Uh, I did film this bit, but it didn't come out. <sighs> Joys of live production. So uh, you can see now the uh, the cushion's all done. It's got black and blue on it. How did I do that? And don't worry about the fact it looks terrible. I know it looks terrible. It will do at this stage, like all good comic book art. Um, quite simply, I reproduced an old comic book or manga tradition, which is when you're doing anything that's black leather, uh, when you're drawing comic book art, what you traditionally do is you uh, ink the outline of the thing, 
uh, then you colour it with blue watercolour and then you go back over the blue watercolour with black or a dark colour where the creases would be so that ideally what you have is everything's black apart from where there's a highlight and that's where the blue is. So that's what I've tried to reproduce here. To do it I just used a Gundam marker, black Gundam marker. You can use a Sharpie, any kind of fine uh, pen like that which will just put the, the black on. You can do it with a brush as well if you want. Uh, sometimes what I tend to do, even with the skill level 5 build, there'll still be some things I keep simple. A lot of model making is knowing when to cut your losses now because this is going to be inside and it's going to have more weathering on it as well so don't worry it looks terrible now. A lot of this is knowing when to cut your losses. When people look at this finished model they're not going to be really seeing inside the cockpit that much. So we will make an effort with the cockpit obviously uh, but we're not going to go too panicky about it because the majority of our work is going to be spent on the frame and the exterior armour. So the interior want it to look nice, we want it to look good but I'm not going to spend days and days painting this chair just for it to, to be not really that visible. I need it to be good enough that when you when your eye catches it uh, you see the detail but we don't need to get you know super super detailed here because you're not going to see it that much and that's part of model making is learning when to cut your losses and know that you don't need to spend months and months working on something. Um, you can do, I mean there are people that make say World War II planes and they make and paint the, the engine beautifully to look like a real engine and then it gets covered up with the cowling around it and the and the, the exterior framework and then you never see it. Now they know it's there and that is a valid thing to do because they know it's there and they put all the effort and they can take photographs. But for me for the sake of this build, unless I want this video build to take years, um, I'm just doing what I need to do on the interior for now. So don't panic, it doesn't make it less than a skill level 5 build because all our attention is going to be on the outside. So yeah, gone over with the pen, so we've got the blue and uh, black, as I say, it looks terrible don't worry I know it looks terrible when you do it it'll look terrible it's it's a middle step we've still got um, washes and other weathering to do on this chair when we do the cockpit so any bits where the pen's gone over around the edge here don't worry that will get hidden in the washes you've got to think ahead and think about the, what you, you've yet to do and how that will blend away the colors once this has been gloss varnished and weathered and matte varnished uh, and then a gloss put back on the leather the black and the blue will kind of blend together a bit as well and we'll do some some powder shading on here as well just to sort of fade it all. So don't worry, it looks terrible, pretty much it does, but it's all just an intermediate layer. Now what I learned many, many years ago when I used to do um, online comics, uh, and when I used to do proper cartoon art, I used to do proper expensive paper, ink and watercolor comic book art, um, was that when you do the initial ink outlining and the initial color layers, they do look terrible, they look horrible. I used to get a whole page of a comic done and I'd be like, oh, this looks like complete nonsense. But it's when you do the last few steps that it all comes together. And you'll find this throughout this build and throughout any of your builds. So yes, it looks terrible now, but as we do more, it will start to come together. And when it's finished, hopefully, hopefully, uh, what we'll have is something that looks cool. It looks like a seat with a leather cushion and it all comes together and the eyes fool. It's about fooling the eyes. Sometimes you have to exaggerate stuff at scale to make it look more convincing. So enough waffle, let me go and let this dry and then we'll move on to the next step. Back in a moment. Right, okay, so next step. Uh, everything has now been gloss varnished, you can see here on the floor, nice and shiny. I use the Pledge Floor Care, Pledge Floor Care finish, two times more shine. On this, that's had a chance to dry. I've done all the, um, all the main parts for the cockpits, the walls, the floor, uh, while I was there I took advantage of the fact I had the gloss varnish out and did these uh, little, uh, I forgot what they're called, somebody told me as well the bit the piston goes in, actuators, maybe that's the word, I don't know. I also gloss varnish the engines as well, the big rocket motors, they've got a nice coat of gloss on them, so that's had that little while to dry. So the next step now, we're going to start doing a little bit of weathering before we start putting all this together. And the first step we're going to do is, um, well, a lot of times what I would do is a wash. Now, normally like a thin paint wash. Now, as you know, because this is a gumpler, uh, you can't trust that the plastic won't explode and fall apart and die. So, can't really do in a thinned wash. It's a bit of a pain. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a panel line wash. I'm using the Deep Grey, uh, a MIG and it's faded away. 1602, sorry for the focus. Uh, and we're going to just do this in a kind of roundabout sort of gunk wash kind of way. I'm not using oil paints on this build so I can't do a gunk wash. So we're going to get the deep grey. I'm going to give it a good old stirry stirry first. 
I'm gonna get that darn good stir just off camera. I'm just using my metal stirry stick, making sure I get all the goodness from the bottom of the jar. Now, how are we gonna do this? We want to put some shading, really. Uh, like when do, you do a black wash. Now, I did try taking some um, standard uh, MIG black acrylic paint and thinning it, because I can't use thinners, thinning it water instead of, or even thinning it with water instead of uh, thinners, but it didn't really work. So uh, what we're gonna try, and do, it just didn't leave any real wash behind at all. So I'm gonna do something else. We're gonna take some of this. Now this is enamel based. It's a panel line wash, but we're gonna use it in a slightly different way. What we're going to do is this. We are going to do a sort of panel line wash and get hair on it. Brilliant, thank you very much. But I'm not being too careful. I'm not doing it like I would normally do a panel line wash. I'm just going around the edges. Now I'm not being too careful at all because there's a second stage to this. So it's sort of a gunk wash. And I'm going off the fact that enamel paints have a reasonably long drying time. Nowhere near as long as oil paints, but still not long nonetheless. So you can see this is a very quick and simple process now I could just brush the whole piece, but I don't want to waste my panel line wash. It's a really nice colour, uh, and I don't want to waste it, because we're going to use it a lot on the outside as well. And the last thing I want to do is run out of something halfway through this build. So we're just going to go in, and we're going to go around the edges. Let's get that in there. I'm going to try and get it to accumulate in these little gaps and again I'm not worrying that I'm getting it everywhere remember this has been gloss varnished and what we're going to start to, in fact I'm just going to brush it over like that there we go give it some variance uh, now what we're hoping to do is start to give some kind of discoloration but the trick is I want to be able to remove this where, where I need to to re-reveal and get it everywhere by the way it's on my thumb uh, to reveal the metallic paint underneath so that's as much as I need to do there I just need to clean my brush uh, to clean your brush using these enamel products just use uh, either the uh, ammo enamel thinners or any standard oil paint thinners will do I would recommend odorless turpentine uh, sorry odorless turpenoid or odorless oil paint thinners purely because the odorless that's the important word okay right this is at about 10 or 15 minutes now so what we're going to do is the next step, which is to take the cotton bud, uh, which isn't actually glowing, it's just my white balance. It's not a beam cotton bud. Uh, dead simple, totally dry. All we're gonna do is first of all, run over the surface of everything, just to get it off the raised edges. And we're gonna go across them and over them, but we're gonna try and avoid going into the recesses if we can just to rub it off and this is where it's a bit like a gunk wash we're just taking it, the excess off the raised areas it can either come off really easily or be a bit hard work it depends it can vary uh, and what we'll probably do you have to watch for little bits of filaments coming off what we'll probably do as well is go over with one last dry brush right at the very end so what we need to do now is go in and clean up some of these a little bit. Now you see how it's kind of blended a lot of it into the background so it's kind of smoothed itself out. You've not got any obvious brush marks. So not a lot of this will come off, but just enough. So at this stage you're either blending it or working it in. Now you may get some little scribbly bits where it comes off, but don't worry too much. We're just really blending it in. Blending it in where we can. <laughs> if you get any bits of fibres and stuff coming off the cotton bud, don't panic. Once it's all fully dried out, you can just brush those off. But you can see how there is stuff coming off. Oops. <laughs> now, there's a few little bits here where I'm rubbing it too hard. I'm taking actually taking paint off as well which shouldn't happen, but it's not the end of the world because again, it just adds to the weathering. It's all part of the randomness. Uh, 
And all we're doing is really blending all this in together to make a smooth finish. So you're not really going to remove it too much. You're not going to go straight back to the original chrome colour. <laughs> but you are going to remove a lot of it. And you're just going to get this nice, not clean look. Take your time. Okay, I can see some of the fibres coming off, but again, once you've done, they'll come off once it's all fully dried. It's probably still a bit tacky. And that's that. That's what we're really looking for, just to give it a slightly dirty, worn look. And so what we'll do, a couple of bits where I have actually gone back through to the plastic, but I'm not bothered because it's just part of the part of the wear and tear and it looks cool. We've got other weathering to do on here, but that's what I'm really aiming for. And what I can do is bring some of the edges back with a bit more dry brushing right at the end. So I'll go and get the chair done and the wall, the other parts of the walls and stuff like that. Probably wrap it up here for this episode and I'll go off and get all these done. Uh, in the next one, we'll do the last little bits and I'll try and figure out which weathering I'm going to do because there's more weathering to do anyway. So I've got to figure out what I can do before I assemble the cockpit and what I can do once the cockpit's put together. I'm not doing the outside of the cockpit yet, just the interior. So thank you so much for watching. As always, go off and make yourself something cool. Hope this has given you some ideas. Do uh, pop along to my website and Facebook and everything else. It's uh, on Facebook, I'm facebook.com forward slash modelmakingguru and Twitter, I'm at modelmakingguru. And obviously the website is modelmakingguru.com. Uh, do pop along to the uh, Ammo website as well and pick yourself up some of these awesome products, web address here. Do consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, you'll see at the end of this, uh, there in the description for the video, there is a link to Patreon uh, where I'm asking people to see if they can help support me. Uh, give me the option of making more of these videos, spending more time making these and less time having to have a day job. There's exclusive content on Patreon. There's a bit exclusive uh, build videos. There's a Kshatriya video, build video going on. Uh, and exclusive live streams and things like that. So consider popping along and offering your support. Thank you for watching. And as always, adios amoebas.